Hey everyone, back at it for another video. I just passed quantitative analysis for business C723. And I just filmed this whole video, a 10 minute video, and my microphone wasn't on. Test, test. All right, so I'm gonna put a little more depth into my videos, especially with classes like this one, because it is confusing at first, but let me reassure you that this class is not as hard as you'll make it seem. Yes, you do have to understand the concepts, but you'll be good if you just listen to the videos in the course study guide. So don't be like me and take notes on the actual book when the book doesn't help out that much. It's the professor, she puts the study guides together because that's the best way to pass the exam. So that's how you should do it. Um, so starting off, unit three is where I started getting a little a little shaky. If initially you should be able to get like, what is quantitative? Quantitative is numbers. Qualitative is like surveying or feeling. So that part is pretty easy to grasp, but I think unit three is where it gets tricky. So unit three, we wanna remember PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. It's the order of operations. So a lot of this does require you to do linear algebra and it's not as it's not as complicated as you would make it if you haven't taken a math class in years like me it's not as bad as it, as it is in your head so make sure to know pemdas when you're doing your linear uh linear expressions or yeah linear equations i should say so starting off, we have y hat. So it's the y with the little carrot above it. This is just a placeholder. Don't be confused. They're going to give you y hat equals a plus x1 plus b1 plus x3. Don't get overwhelmed. Just plug it in. It's a linear equation. Plug in the variables, and you should be good. Also, what's very helpful is if you have a scientific calculator. I got the TI30XS from Target for $20. So make sure to check that out because you want to have that as well as a whiteboard because it'll help out to write out the equations. But I did not do that. I did not have a whiteboard and I kind of struggled. I got to get one. So you want to know how to do the one-way tables and the two-way tables that are in the course video. Um, also with that, you are going to be calculating, let me see, I have it in my notes right here. Moving on to unit four, you're going to be doing a lot of expected value. So with expected value, this one is where it tripped me up and I kind of got nervous, but it'll be like a decision tree or table. All you're doing is taking the big number that they give first and multiplying it by the decimal that they provide. Oftentimes, it's a decimal, but it can also show up as a percentage. So I hope that doesn't confuse, but for example, you're going to get something on a decision tree, and there's going to be two, uh, two equations that you're going to have to calculate. It's going to say 2 million, and it's going to have 0 0.60, and then it's going to have 3 million, and it's going to have 0.25 or something. You're basically just going to multiply the million by the decimal or the million by the percent, and then you're going to get two different values at the end and you're going to add those together and that's going to be your number. With that being said, those type of questions, they're looking for the max value. So they're going to be labeling it as like max Z or minimum value, min Z throughout the course. Don't get confused. It's pretty simple and straightforward. So with that, you're going to be looking at... I have it in my notes here. You're going to look at tables, the decision tree, and a payoff table. And all of those are the same type of questions. It's just worded differently. So the storage on my phone ran out on that last video. However, I do have to say, just go through the course study guide and you will be okay for the OA. The instructor put a bunch of videos that if you review and take the quizzes alongside of it, you should be able to pass. Thank you so much for watching.